Daniel from Adventures in Filmmaking. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make the animated logo of Triune Films from Ryan Connolly's popular YouTube channel, Film Riot. We'll be creating all of this in Apple Motion 5. Like and subscribe if you're looking to see more tutorials like this in the future. Alright, now let's hop into the edit. If you're looking to get the exact colors as the logo, I just typed into Google Images Triune Films and then I downloaded the logo itself. And then you can just go to media and click on here, right click and click open in viewer. And you'll see the logo right here, right in front of you. The next thing you're going to do is go back to your layers, select your project and make sure that your background color is set to white. If you really want to get exact with the color, click on the background color, come right over here to colors, select this little dot and then click the white right there. But it's pretty easy. It looks like it's just pretty neutral white. Next thing you're going to do is create this circle. So let's move this Triune Films over right here, get rid of this, select the circle, hold down shift, and then drag out to about what you think is a good size for this logo, and then let go. With the circle selected, let's move this out of our way and go over to shape. Click on the fill color, click on the little dot, and then click on where you want to match the color at. I'm going to click right there and you'll get the exact color as the logo. Our next step is to put the triangle in here. So let's get rid of this colors and then come over here to the library. Select the library, come down to shapes. With shapes selected, come down to triangle. Drag triangle right up here into this group. Once the triangle's in there, select the triangle and bring it right over until you feel like you've centered it enough, just like the logo in the picture. I'm going to come up here to the inspector. With my triangle still selected, I'm going to turn the fill off and turn the outline on. And then I'm just going to boost the width just a little bit. And then come down here to the joint, turn this to square, the start cap, turn it to square, the end cap, turn it to square. Once those have been completed, I'm just going to get this out of my way. Once I have the triangle completed, I'm going to come down here to the text, select the text, and I'm just going to put it right in the center. And then I'm going to type Triune Films. And then I'm going to center it. I'm going to come over here. The font that they're actually using is Nexa Bold. Just type that in online, Nexa Bold free download. I got mine from Font Fabric. To adjust the font the way that they did it, go over here to tracking. Stretch this out just a tad. I have mine about 21%. As I'm going through this, I try to make fine adjustments. Once we have our text over that, we'll come back to that in just a second to make some fine tuning. But first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this text into its own group. Select the text, drag it up, make sure it's out of the group. And for this new group, we're gonna select this and I'm just gonna call mine text. And then I'm gonna come down here to this group and I'm gonna call this group triangle. Once that's completed, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna select my triangle. I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna select rectangle mask. And then I'm just gonna drag this to create this little slit in the corner. You're going to come over here to your la left side and you're going to click on the blend mode. Click subtract. In order to make sure the mask controls are up, you're going to want to make sure this mask is actually selected down here. Just drag this over and make some of your fine tuning. Once you fine tune your mask just enough, I'm going to select my triangle again. Come over here, I'm going to make another rectangle mask. And then I'm going to drag this right across and make a tri rectangle right across the text. Come over here to the left side, make sure your mask is selected. Make sure the mask is selected right here, the mask controls. Go to the mask blend mode. I'm going to click on this and I'm going to hit subtract. Now that we've finished our logo, let's animate it. Come down here and select the triangle. And then come over here and select the paint tool. Now it's important that you start right here with the paint tool. And as you go, you need to continue drawing the entire time and not let go. So I'm going to start right on this corner. You need to try to stay as center as possible. Once you've made it all around, right click on your triangle. Click add image mask. Once the image mask is on there, click select your paint stroke. Drag and drop it right on top of the image mask. You'll notice that there will be a little black arrow right there. Once that's on top, make sure your paint stroke is selected. Come over here to the outline. Select the width. Drag this out until the corners are filled. You may need to fiddle with the mask down here in the corner, as well as the width 
of the paint stroke to make sure that it actually fits to what your liking is. Since we finished that portion, as you've noticed, this mask has disappeared. This is an easy fix. Just come right below your triangle, select your image mask, and bring it right to the bottom of your mask. As you've noticed, portions of your triangle have been messed up, like this little corner here for me. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my paint stroke, come over here to my width, and I'm just gonna increase this. Once I've completed that, now let's animate this triangle. So let's bring this form about mm, 13 or 14 frames. And then the first point offset, if you notice, goes all the way to the end. You're gonna bring that all the way to 100%. Select record, grab the first point offset and bring it all the way back. Turn off record, and now let's play it back and see what happens. It's looking pretty good so far. It's going a little too fast though. If you want to adjust the speed, it's quite easy. Just come down here to the keyframe in the triangle, and then drag that forward. The further forward you drag it, the longer it'll take to go through the animation. Let's see what I like. Once you've selected the type of speed that you like for the keyframe, you can also add some more improvements to it. I'm going to select the keyframe, right click on it, show in keyframe editor. Come down here and I'm going to select ease both. As you notice, it eases in quite smoothly at the end if you do that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the triangle itself again. Once I have the triangle group selected, I'm just going to pull it forward just a few frames. Next thing I'm going to select as well is the text. I'm going to grab that a few frames forward. Make sure that's just a slightly ahead of the triangle, and we'll make some more fine adjustments as we go. Once you've brought those forward just a tad, we're going to bring our circle back. So it just pops up right there. And then come over here to the top left corner, go to properties, select the scale, bring the scale all the way down, and select record, bring this forward just a few frames, bring the scale all the way back up to 100%, turn off record. Your next step in this process is to animate the text coming down. This is pretty easy as well. The first thing you want to do is come over here and select the text itself. First thing you want to do is come over here and select the text group itself. Once the text group has been selected, come over here to the bottom right corner and select the rectangle mask tool. Bring your rectangle mask right over the top of it. Then select your text. Come over here to the library. Once you're in the library, go to your behaviors. Once you're in here, select Motion Path. Drag and drop Motion Path on top of the text. This should be the end where the text is going to go to, and this should be the beginning. I'm just going to drag this up to make it a little easier on myself. As you notice, it disappears because it's going outside the mask. Bring this end part right there. This is the length, this is the speed and the length that you're basically the text will be moving at. I'm going to hit O with the motion path selected, and then grab the end of this, bring it up a little bit so that it stays within the mask. As you notice, the longer I make this go, the longer that this will take to come down. But I need to make it shorter. I'm going to put it about right there. Now I just need to evaluate it and see if I like it. So I probably just need to fix my mask. So I'm going to select my rectangle mask. I'm just going to bring this down just a tad, so about right there. This is looking pretty good so far. This is almost fully animated. So this is looking pretty good so far. One of the last steps that we have to do is basically to add a dolly movement to this. So select your project, click to add object, select camera, and then switch it to 3D. Don't worry about this. This is going to tell us that one of our masks has been disabled because we need to flatten our 3D groups. This is pretty easy. Select your group. I'm going to select triangle. Make sure the 3D is selected. And then for flatten, make sure flatten is selected. As well, click on your text. 
Make sure this, the 3D is selected on here and click flatten. Go to the beginning. As you notice, it's still not fixed. Your mask has been disabled. Come down here and select rectangle mask. Once that's been turned back on, go right through and you'll see it's been fixed. Now let's go up to our camera. Select your camera, select behavior, go to camera and select dolly. Once dolly has been selected, we need to go over here to the left corner, make sure behaviors is selected on dolly and bring this forward until your desired outcome. Now, I don't like the look of mine. I wanna fix the overall look of it. So I'm gonna turn these into one big group. And I'm gonna call this group main. And then I'm gonna drag this into the group and I'm gonna drag this into the group. And now I can just move this over wherever I want because I wanna center it a little better. I also don't like the way the text is. So I'm gonna come down here to the text, select my text, go to format, and I'm gonna increase the tracking. And now watch as your dolly zooms in and you got a slight movement to it. This has been Daniel from Adventures in Filmmaking. I hope you guys enjoyed this Apple Motion 5 tutorial. If, if you'd like to see more tutorials like this in the future, be sure to like and subscribe right down below. And I'll see you guys next time for our next adventure.